Hello, Portland. Once again, you are tuned in to KPSU, Portland's college radio station, which is broadcasting from www.kpsu.org 24-7. You can also check us out on the TuneIn app for Apple products or on the official Android app for KPSU in the Google Play Store. This is DJ Rochelle. This is Live Friday you're tuned into, And I have in the studio this week, Chad Van Dyke of the Outer Space Heaters. Hello, Chad. How's it going? Good. I just figured out these headphones just real quick. <laughs> Had to adjust yourself there. <laughs> they don't work the way I'm used to. Making things complicated. Seriously. <laughs> so tell us what you got prepared for us today. Um, well, I'm going to be doing some uh, solo stuff I've written over the, over the years uh, of playing guitar, which have been many, but most of these are new. So, you know, past few years, some um, as recently as last few weeks. So, might as well embarrass myself on the TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Depends. Are they embarrassing stories that you well, write about? No, not in particular. I'm not, they're not, uh, they're not that ephemeral. Like, I, di- I don't talk about going to Taco Bell or anything. <laughs> like, getting a DUI, but none of which have ever happened. I've never eaten at Taco Bell, I've never gotten a DUI. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, right. This song is called The Way That It Was. All right. Let's and, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, nope. What do you got? Uh, nothing. Just a uh, you know, fairly new song. Eh, I might need a little, like, uh, I need to glance down a few times, but nobody will notice, right? <laughs> no judgment here. Not at all. i 
little little uh, verse improvisation. Nice. No one knew. Until I said that. Now your secret's up. Shoot. <laughs> what was the name of that song again? Uh, the way that it was. Ah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. The lyrics. A little the, bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds like there's a torn feeling there between like letting it go and wanting the best for him and yeah and yeah. not wanting at all <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i think uh some of that's fun to to kind of explore in a song or in a story of the duality of wanting and and uh and also wanting uh you know happiness for someone else and so yeah balancing your own desires with somebody else's it's always a tough trick I don't think anyone's got that one mastered. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I can take it away from there and uh, go into something a little more dark. Uh, this is a... Uh, 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 shoot, what is this song called? I forget. Oh, well, I guess it's called I Will Remain. Sorry. I, okay. I, I've never named it, but... Right. We're going to go with that one. <laughs> makes me wonder it's trying to think how to best phrase this you kind of touch on some of the mental health issues there (laughs) and uh, i kind of wonder if uh creative types if it's true that we're more susceptible to that or if we're more honest about it Mm, well i mean uh, i 
just having interesting conversation about just this. But uh, yeah, definitely. You kind of have to be in tune with your own insanity in order to kind of like be creative. I mean, yeah. Or you can write minus the bare lyrics. <laughs> and it can be fine. You can just be a normal guy. <laughs> if there right, is such a thing I'm as never, normal. My band's never going to open for them now. <laughs> really screwed that one up. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, that song was uh, just the idea. Yeah, but I just sick and twisted, you know, just the uh, <laughs> finding love in an insane asylum or something. As well as the idea of, you know, the medication to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Whether or not the pills really <laughs> fix things or... or <laughs> yeah, for sure. Or cause them. <laughs> yeah. Someone flew over the cuckoo's nest style business. Exactly. Cool. Um, well, I have another tune here. Uh, this is an old song. Uh, it's probably the oldest song that I've written that I still play. <laughs> so there's plenty in the cellar that are doomed <laughs> to never see the light of day. Unless I'm really, really searching for material, three-hour gig stuff. But uh, <laughs> this song's called Into the Fire. Oh! 
dark on that one. No, it's a little bit of a happier song. Yeah. Uh, clearly my psychosis is deepening. <laughs> the last one I wrote a lot, a lot more recently, of course. Okay, <sighs> shifting gears a little bit. Uh, you played tambourine on your foot with that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Tell me how you decided to pull that trick. Um, hmm. I don't know, for want of more instruments. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a cheap trick, like, you know, if you're playing by yourself, just, like, give a little rhythm. And people, I don't know, it's kind of kitschy, but uh, I try not to do it, like, and I'm tapping my foot anyways, so it's just as like, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well, like, give it a little rhythm. So, yeah, shimmy and shake a little bit. Sometimes it, it makes it difficult, it, like, if I'm, like, doing subdivisions, like, I should practice it, like, you know, like. <laughs> you know, to, like, keep, keep the two while, you know, doing threes and stuff, because I'm not actually a very competent drummer in the least. <laughs> <laughs> All my everybody I've ever played in a band with can attest to me getting on their drum kit and proving myself unworthy of the sticks. But uh, yeah, I don't know the foot thing. You can do the kick drum at least. I can do that kick drum. Yeah, as long as it's like weightless and I just tap my foot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's actually one. Yeah, oh I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> no, I kind of wonder. Did you see anybody do that before? Or what gave you the idea to put the tambourine there? I've never seen anybody do it, but I'm sure people do it. Um, well, I guess like one, you know, like buskers, you know, mm -hmm. kick drum and hi-hat, something like that. But no, I've never seen anybody like do it in an open mic setting or, or you know, or anything like that, uh, mm -hmm. singer-songwriter-esque. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be a bad idea. People like it, so I don't know. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the guitar you got there. Uh, bought it at a pawn shop. Uh, probably had it for four, about <laughs> four years or so. Um, it's nothing special. It's a Epiphone uh, Hummingbird. The Hummingbird has been etched away. Uh, now the remnants must be on my fingers and the soap I eventually used to clean it off with. But uh, yeah, uh, it's just a, just a decent guitar. It plays uh, pretty nicely. I, I should probably make an investment for like a real nice acoustic guitar in the next few years. But for now, it, it, it's totally, totally suits me. I, I like it better than most every other guitar that I play. Does that, if that, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay. Like, what do you normally look for when you pick up a guitar? Like, I know everyone has specific things in mind when you go to get a guitar. Um, good action um, and a good neck. Uh, this one's a dreadnought, unfortunately, so I can't really get high up onto the frets. So that's like a drawback for me. Um, but it, you know, I, I don't know. I like the traditional feel of like having to reach for those notes and like you know playing acoustic guitar you've got an octave you know you've got 12 frets to go and then whatever your fingers can squeeze up there I think that's kind of it's cheating if you get a, a more accessible <laughs> guitar body and um, yeah I mean good tone this is nice and bright and sprucey um, but I mean I don't know I and also I hate acoustic electrics like I hate the pickup switch thing being on there it's so tacky so if I was going to do anything with this guitar and not get another one, I'd get a pickup installed in it that's just like, you know, you plug it in and it's passive. And, uh, so, yeah, just, uh, I don't know, it's my pet peeves with acoustic guitars. <laughs> if it can't get wet, then it's not an acoustic guitar. Fair enough. All right, you've got, as you put the, God, I just lost the name there for a second there, the strings. Mm -hmm. You've got the wires all twisted up at the top there. Yeah, that's... Uh, a just microcosm a of my life, but I, I was gonna just kind of just say it gives a nice breezy effect. One time, like years ago, I did um, I uh, I did like a like a movie soundtrack for like a friend, and, like he was doing like a college movie. It was like bad acting and stuff, but it was just like yeah, I'll go over to your home studio and like record the you know ambient guitar stuff, and like I didn't cut my strings, and like it was just in there, and it was like oh, I kind of liked it. So, so something you just kept afterwards. Yeah, and it's a it's a poking hazard, and uh, and everybody tells me to cut it. So it's just like my sl like ability to be rebellious in the face of like like obscene amounts of reason. Just like just cut the damn thing. So. <laughs> You're like nope, nope. <laughs> I guess that's one way of keeping people from grabbing your guitar. That is true. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have a guard dog, so yeah, this is it for me. <laughs> Uh, cool. Well, I uh, I can play y'all some more tunes if you like. Let's do it. That's called the tuning song. That's the tuning song, and it's over. <laughs> uh, sweet. 
yeah, uh, this this song's pretty poppy. Um, I wrote it when I was on tour uh, in February and um, just driving through Texas, and uh, well, not you know, it was it was a road song. But What's it called? It's called uh, Highway 82. Okay. you to stop I was waiting <laughs> <laughs> that's not, it's like a yeah painfully poppy but yeah you know. yeah at the same time it almost has like kind of a middle finger when you say drive the 82 instead <laughs> 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 like a that's screw ex- you sort of yeah that was that was like yeah sort of a real story that was happening you know like a breakup on the road and it was like you know just yeah <laughs> flying the bird <laughs> down highway 82 Drinking and driving. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm um, dumb. <laughs> but I'm um, dumb, dumb. Thank you.
Did I tell you I've never gotten a DUI? There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. T while we're on the subject, drive mm -hmm. an 82. Yeah. This is perfect time to plug some of the other bands you're in. Oh, sure. Um, so, yeah, I uh, play guitar and uh, sing um, in the Outer Space Eaters. It's, it's kind of like been my baby for the past uh, two, three years. Uh, we just released an album after about nine, ten months of work on that. Uh, we started working on that, I think, tracking in January. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, really excited about it. We have a release show uh, on Halloween at Habesha. Um, we are going to be playing with a few groups. Um, like, we have uh, one of the members from Drunk Dad, who's DJing that night. Um, I've also got uh, Gizmo Punk, which is Scott Ray, my roommate. He's incredible. Uh, he is doing a trap set and some old hip-hop stuff. He's going to have an MC. Um, and he's also doing 3D projection mapping for the night, um, which is, I, I, I will put this in the most layman uh, of terms possible. It's basically like taking projectors, um, mapping them onto physical objects, like uh, like physical objects that are built, um, and then putting the visual a uh, visual show on those physical objects. But um, it's just, so it's really simple in theory. It's just really cool what can be done with them. So basically, uh, Scott, aka Gizmo Punk, um, does. Uh, uh, he basically like can can control it to where it's sound activated by certain frequencies. So like basically for like a DJ set or like a live band set, it basically, if you have like some of these objects around on stage, like it just creates the coolest live show visuals ever. So I'm really excited, like actually really excited for the show, um, as I should be, but a lot of people are like, yeah, we're real excited for the show. Never mind, we have to do tons of work. Please come. But uh, please do come. It's Halloween, but Halloween's on a Friday. And uh, you still got November 1st to party. So we're going to be doing costumes. We're going to be playing. Um, basically, we're going to be playing with a band called Spare Spells. And it's their uh, project release party. And um, they are like, uh, like, a, like a, they have their own like religion. It's like this really cool cult crazy thing that's going to be amazing for Halloween. So everything about this is going to be like an awesome Halloween show. We're going to kill it. Uh, we're going to play our album. Uh, front to back, and uh, we're going to have a hard time show. imagining outer space heaters with hip hop and 3D projection and a cultish band. You, you, ha <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Um, <laughs> I think what's cool is like the because we're a concept band and we're like doing conceptual things, like it works. Um, and uh, it's more of like the atmosphere. I actually like playing shows like this better than rather than being like, yeah, so come out and see us play with four other like minded rock bands. Because um, it's like, yeah, I mean, what's a, a fun event is supposed to be something that's varied and interesting, but all still good, right? I mean, um, usually when bills are put up like that, it's like a bunch of bad bands that they couldn't, like, f you know, fit together. Or just a bad, like a like really bad job booking a show mm -hmm. or something. But um, while these don't come along too often, I am, like, excited to do it when, it, when like, the acts are good and... Um, yeah, we're just we're happy to play and we're excited too. So we'll be having our CDs there um, for five dollars or you know upwards from there. Um, I do have download cards on my person, and so do the other members of the Outer Space Heaters. So if you see us at a show before then, you can grab a download card for free. But if you give us five bucks or more, we'll put our little stamp on it, and you can get a CD for free at our release show. So nice. Yeah. And uh, I think you guys got other oh, merch in the works, like T-shirts and stuff. You know what? We should have T-shirts. It's really which just was like getting the album paid for. Like we are all cash positive. It's mm -hmm. good to say that we can like yeah, and we'll have T-shirts very soon. So I was cool. just like wanting to get this album out and do that whole thing. But yeah, Outer Space Heater shirts. Like I'd wear my own band's T-shirt because it's like this is so ridiculous. This is awesome, you know. <laughs> but priorities, you know. <laughs> yeah, priorities. Uh, yeah, the music before the clothes. That's like yeah, that's where we're, we're at. But. So, cool. And uh, I, uh, I don't think I need to plug anything else from What's that. What's going on with uh, NTNT right now? NTNT is doing well. We're just like uh, um, we're looking for a fourth member. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, we've got a few people in the works, but really just looking for a strong keys player. Um, you know, singing is a plus, but not necessary. Um, yeah, just really into a strong fourth member. You know, uh, to fill to fill it out for uh, for in town shows and uh, gigging and Dustin's been working hard uh, basically just like building up capital for the band so he's been working a lot um, I pretty much uh, am trying I work a lot too but uh, I, I music is like a, a large part of my work as well so I try to have as much time as humanly possible to play and to write and to do all that stuff so um, just you know 
bouncing between our schedules and whatnot. And uh, yeah, that's about yeah. it. What made you decide you need a keyboard player? Well, as uh, opposed to like well, a when violinist we, or something. Well, um, we we are still like considering having a like a live bass player again. But I, my whole approach on it was like, well, let's get somebody that can play bass synth and then do some of the melody lines in the right hand. So like, you know, I mean, really like. Uh, filling out two roles at once because I mean live bass is fine but the, uh, and it's great if you're a good bass player but if you're not it's just as like let's get somebody in here to do you know synth keys and for most of the tunes it seems to fit better um, but yeah I mean if they're if they're a kick and bass player and they can just lock in on the groove it's like we'll uh, walk them aboard but um, you know we're a synth rock band and we don't have a synth player which is uncomfortable yeah know. Like but, something's missing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's not due to, it's just due to we don't have enough hands, you know? I mean, we're all capable of playing everything, um, but it's just this like, yeah, finding the right people for the project has been, you know, that's that's the search because you don't want to bring somebody in that's like, you know, teach them all these tunes and, and take all this time to get to know them and stuff, and then, you know, they're a flake or they're a psychopath or something, or, you know, you got to like, it's just, yeah, it's a vetting process, so. Absolutely. If you were to go back in time, like, you know, years and years ago when you first started playing music before mm -hmm. you jo joined either of these bands, what sort of advice would you give yourself? Um, well, I say that I would be like, oh, learn production, but no. I'd probably do just this. I'd probably just uh, work harder, and um, knowing what I know now, um, I would just be a lot better uh, business person even though I'm still kind of terrible at it. But I mean, like, I'm a lot better than I will. You know, just really, like, like what is your product? What, what, what can you offer people you're asking favors for, basically? You know, there's this sort of entitlement of, like, well, I play and I'm in a band, so, you know, give me shows and give me money. And it's like, well, okay, do you have a draw? You know, do you have stuff to sell? Are you going to scream the F-bomb drunkenly at midnight on stage? You know, I was like, there's certain things, like, you know, just professionalism stuff. So gotten a lot better at that. And if I could go back in time and just like have these skills and I'd be in better bands, <laughs> you know, you know, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> maybe I could have been in that Scorpions tribute band by now. Damn I can, say, I can say that, right? Yeah, you there can totally Damn, say it that. I might fun. judge you a little bit for the Scorpions reference, well, but that's okay. you know, whatever. <laughs> Rock me like a hurricane later though. Is that uh, your karaoke go-to? <laughs> I wish. I don't think I have that range. I don't know. I've never tried it. Um, no, because I always do B-sides on karaoke. I mm -hmm. always want, I, I don't know. Just, I love karaoke, though. If anybody, open call, if anybody, if anybody wants to go sing karaoke with me, we can totally do that. I'll pick out, like, obscure spoon songs or whatever. I don't know. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I can play some more tunes. I don't know what Yeah, let's do that. Goes. Yeah. Um... Let me think here. Yeah, let's uh, let's do let's do this. Is that the actual name of the song? No, this. I wish. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, man. <laughs> there we go. Cool.
years and I've looked and I've lied. I think of you all the time. Whoa, despite all the fights and the blood that was spilled, I'm in love with you still. waiting for you to headbang more. Jesus. <laughs> All right, I gotta calm down. Catch your breath. Nice. All right. Uh, so tell me, I'm, I'm gonna dig a little deeper here. Sure, why not? All right. What initially inspired you to become a musician? Oh, um, oh, I wanted to rock like real hard. Like, like, you know, this is just into Van Halen and stuff, just nerdy kid stuff. <laughs> but like, actually, I remember listening to uh, Master of Reality by Black Sabbath. Like, and I was in, like, Fred Meyer. Like, and it was, like, I was with my mom, like, getting records. And I was, like, I was, like, in fifth grade. And I was, like, oh, my God. And it was, like, <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much just, I don't know, just, and my dad played, and um, I was around other guitar players. And so uh, when my folks split up, I would go over on the weekend to my dad's place and, uh, or my dad's friend's place that he lived in. And so there would just be musicians over on the weekend, and, um, uh, you know, I, I played like a, a horn in middle school and uh, um, my dad just finally convinced me to pick up the guitar and just try it out. And um, so, you know, I learned some, you know, stupid new metal tunes or, you know, just Seether or something. I was like, all right, let's do something better. And, you know, I think like pretty, pretty initially got into the blues and got into, you know, rock and, pre you know, pretty typical like avenues for most guitar players like my age. Um, and how, yeah. do, how do you think that's evolved into how you approach music now as a musician? Um, well, I haven't been able to divorce myself from my instrument. Like, that's what sort of like when I was like, oh, I wish I was a producer. Like, I'm kind of glad I, I like still want like um, a connection to my instrument because like, uh, although I can be, I can draw myself back and be like, this isn't appropriate. Like, I don't need to do guitar solos or, or whatever over this and, or stuff like that. And I don't need to like play up to the, my ability level all the time or something like that. Um, laying back is just like a skill as a musician you learn, but um, yeah, I, I'm glad to have to deal with, like, the vice of wanting to play. I mean, that's what makes it fun. So, um, probably, I mean, it's pretty central, to, like, to my songwriting. Like, I mean, like, I write on the guitar. I mean, I'll take stuff to the piano sometimes, but I pretty much exclusively write on the guitar. Um, and anybody that's a musician knows, like, the instrument will filter your musical ideas in weird ways. And uh, so trying to not get stuck in, like, guitar player mentality and, like, you know, certain shapes and, and, and tricks and stuff. Uh, trying to get away with, from that sometimes can be difficult because you're playing an instrument. Um, but, uh, yeah, I get, you know, I'm getting better and better at it, you know, thinking more of a, as a musician. So. Yeah, and as you mentioned, pulling back and looking at your music, if you were to describe to someone who's never met you or never heard your music before, how would you explain it? Um, this stuff, uh, I would just say it's kind of like soulful rock folk, you know, like, so, yeah, kind of like, I mean, pretty much trying to sound like, uh, uh, you know, Otis Redding or something, you know, I mean, 
is t to what uh, if you can see me on TV, I'm not. <laughs> Look at me. I want you. To... <laughs> You're just like, yeah, get into that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shirt I'm wearing. I'm a white man. I am just like white boy coming through. But like, I do like uh, um, to have something with with like swing in it and feel, and um, so that kind of stuff is really important to me. Um, so yeah. Uh, How did that come out of starting with Black Sabbath? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I got into, I mean, I got into jazz in high school and stuff, and like, uh, you know, did jazz band in college, and have kind of like pursued like, in fact, like m some of my first bands that weren't total garbage were like horn bands. So like, I played like, you know, I played in ska bands, and I was in high school, and then uh, did some like art, you know, funk kind of, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I like or, or being around that stuff. I liked it a lot. Um, uh, you know, really, really learning how to like groove on the guitar. So I think that's honestly like you know a strength I developed more so than just like I mean I can play probably as fast and technically as you know years probably but you know incremental mm -hmm. progress to be like oh yeah I'm a little a little more slick on these runs but it's just like you know I'm not getting any faster I'm gonna get older and I'm gonna get slower and stupider probably so um, it's just it's about rhythm and being able to use your ear and use your gut that has probably been the biggest uh, you know advancement and so yeah I'm glad I'm not just into Black Sabbath anymore <laughs> is there someone you train model yourself after like vocally no um, I probably should have, but I didn't, and so, yeah, no, not really. I think uh, people say I sound like people all the time. I think, like, a lot of folks tend to do that anyways, just like, hey, you know. I mean, nobody, barely anybody goes up to me after a show and be like, you know what your guitar playing reminds me of, but, like, a lot of people will come up, you know, after a show and say, you sound just like so-and-so. And so I, I get uh, I get tallest man on earth a lot. Um, uh, I, get, uh, I get some off-the-wall ones like Incubus and stuff. Like I, what's Brandon? I, of course, I forget his name on air. But anyways, I, he, if he's listening, I'm sorry. We're never going to open up for Incubus anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I what don't about know. Uh, guitar wise? I mean, are you going for like the Joe Satriani, or are you going for more Jimi Hendrix? Mm, what are you? I mean, I was into those. I was into Joe Satriani like in high school and through, like college and stuff. But I mean, yeah, no. I don't have any of that gear, and like I, I actually one of my only guitar regrets was not getting into the whammy. Uh, the whammy bar much like I always played well the guitar I still play is a fixed bridge guitar so there's no whammy bar and I never had a guitar that was that great that I really dug into so like I don't do like a lot of whammy bar tricks and Van Halen junk like that so um, I like to play like those guys but only to a certain degree where it's like okay now that you're doing that it's like I'm out you know like I'm doing something else at that point so but um, guitar wise super into George Benson um, super into Pat Martino some of the like uh, like uh, kind of standout jazz guitar players um, Wes Montgomery of course um, uh, you know uh, Django Reinhardt, of course, um, Borelli Green, another, like, gypsy guitar player, uh, Grant Green, um, rock-wise, like, uh, Steve Morse is super cool, like, I love Steve Morse, uh, just his, he's very, uh, he's got, like, a, a very, uh, 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 what would be the word, uh, um, not academic, but, uh, very technical, sort of, yeah, he's got great pedagogy, you know, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, and, but, he makes good music, yeah, <laughs> like, which is, like, you know, not like Michelangelo Baccio, like, yeah, guys are super, super good, and his songs super, super suck. Sorry, we're never opening for them either. Um, yeah. So do you have any, like, guilty pleasures in there that, mm. that you know are really terrible, but you can't resist because well, they're just fun? Like uh, like cover songs or, or stuff like well yeah, I mean I have had to learn a ton of cover songs that I absolutely hate like you know just like this song stinks, but people like it so I mean but and so by way of that I will listen to pop music that sometimes like you know only on the freeway <laughs> <laughs> pulling up to a stoplight like zoo NPR. You heard uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not ashamed of that. Like, because if somebody came at me and was like, yo, bro, why are you listening to Katy Perry? I'd be like, well, I listen to so much nerdier stuff than you, probably. Like, that I can listen to Katy Perry and it's okay. What do you consider nerdy stuff? Well, I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, 
jazz, uh, more experimental music. I mean, like, I don't think it's nerdy, but, like, it's In niche. comparison to Katy Perry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's something that you'd be into if you were into a certain thing, and most people aren't, so that's fine. But I, I, I think I'm doing jazz as a disservice by saying it's, like, nerdy and not, not good. Like, t- tons of people dig jazz. But, like, I mean, the endless 300 BPM, 16th note stream of, like, you know, you know, Borelli Le Green solo is, like, unless you're not a guitar, or, you know, unless you're a guitar player, like, this is probably kind of overdoing it after 10 minutes. But I don't know, so. What do you look for when you go into a record store? Like, what section do you immediately hit? Interesting. Um, well, rock and pop's easy because there's, like, 7,000 aisles. But it kind of depends. Um, let's think. Like, I usually, honestly, still buy CDs. I have a record player, and I have a decent uh, amount of records, but I just don't have, like, I can't justify spending money on records usually. Um, They're definitely a lot more expensive. Yeah, they are, and it's just sort of like, listen, man. If you need to identify with the records, that's cool. No, I mean, some rec- some things are great to listen to on record. And, like, I've sat there with my friend drunkenly, like, comparing, like, digital versus vinyl, like, to hear, you know, differences and mm-hmm. clarity. Usually, oddly enough, I prefer digital because, what do you know, it sounds clearer and you can pick out things. So if you're listening for stuff, you know, it sounds better. But I could understand listening to an album, um, you know, listening, well... Also depends if you get the digital to vinyl, like the yeah, super that's high true. quality audio file. That's true as well. Um, yeah, uh, you know, there, obviously there's certain things that are like lo-fi sounding. I was like, yeah, this would be great on vinyl, but I'm skipping the question, which is where do I go on a record store? Um, it depends on what my mood is. Like sometimes if I'm whimsical and I'm like, I'm going to find a really good jazz record or something, like I'll go there, I'll go to, you know, soul or R&B or... Uh, world music sometimes but i mean typically you know rock pop rock and pop rock and pop (laughs) yeah as far as jazz goes do you go more classic jazz like miles davis or are you going more experimental coltrane Mm, i like um honestly i like fairly straightforward jazz um and I, i i just can't um, I don't like fusion for the reasons that most people don't like fusion and that it's like just wacky synth and guitar tones. Like I, I love Mike Stern as a guitar player and like I was listening to an album of his yesterday and I was like, I can't tell what notes you're playing because th- your guitar tone is so screwed up and just, you know, muted and muffled and hidden under just these weird flanger chorus type sounds that just drive me nuts. So I mean, some, sometimes like just aesthetically, I'll just like the sound of an upright bass and you know, just like the traditional instrumentation of it. But um, you know, I don't know, I, uh, whatever. <laughs> D, all the above. <laughs> yeah, all the above. Long answer, all the above. <laughs> okay, well before we run out of time, let's play one more song. Sure. Um, yeah, let's do it up. Yeah. 
please bring me back the blue lips and the small brown bags of into the floor. My actions lack all self control. I'm giving in. And it's morning, it's waking from my sleep. My demons drag me down. It's times like these I wonder Why did God let me survive? to talk <laughs> it's like how do i touch that it's yeah. kind of about you know it's kind of like some downer party business i don't know i wrote it in the woods so were you that guy that always brings the guitar camping <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> i was the guy that brought the okay i played guitar in four to five of my seven classes for two years like pretty much every day i think they knew that i didn't give a damn so they were like, oh, well, he's in class. And he turns in his homework, so there we go. So I was the weird guitar guy of, you know, several, maybe, you know, a dozen maybe in the school. But I was, you know, anyways, weird guitar guy that brings his guitar to school every day, gets about four hours of practice in at school, definitely brings his guitar camping. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you normally sing around the campfire? Mm, whatever. It depends, on, you know, when, like, you know, I, I don't know. I try to think I could play to my audience. Yeah. I won't I wouldn't play that to like little kids or something. You know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Depends I, on who you're camping with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well thank so, you for having me. Oh, of course. We've Do got we have... a few more minutes, oh, so cool. I okay. wanna make sure we get a chance to plug upcoming stuff and Yeah, definitely. Anything else you wanted to make sure you got a chance to mention? Yeah, I think I'm straight. I definitely have some download cards for you, but, um, you know, I just wanted everybody to know that. We do have a Outer Space Theater's record. Uh, just came out. Um, we're going to have physical copies here, like, in a few days. It's going to be available for our October 31st release show. That is Halloween. So um, that's going to be a great time. Uh, we'll have regular updates on our Facebook. Um, add me on my personal Facebook. Uh, my name is Chad Van Dyke. And... Um, yeah, I think that's it. Do you have any stuff coming up for the uh, solo music? I don't think so. Um, nothing, nothing booked. 
Um, and I think, oh yeah, I guess I should do an open call. Uh, <laughs> um, so I've got, uh, I've got a number of songs, like I, I have a lot of songs. I'm trying to filter some of them into a project, not all of them, like not everything I play needs to be in a band or performed even, but um, that's what open mics are for. But uh, some of these tunes that I played uh, tonight, I would really like a female vocalist for, and so I am kind of like tentatively looking for a uh, female vocalist. So, um, you know, probably the, probably on the softer ends of things, um, but I do have a lot of like, a lot of kind of, uh, you know, desolate, bluegrassy folk tunes, kind of like that one, you know, more bluegrassy in s some senses, but uh, yeah, some of that stuff, but um, mainly, you know, the sweeter songs, like the more, uh, more folk friendly songs. I'd really love to get uh, some female vocals on that. So yeah, if you're a female and you can sing, and uh, you can stand on stage and maybe do something else, you know, shake a kibasa or something. <laughs> oh, well. They could take the tambourine from your foot. Not a chance. No. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> uh -uh. Mm -mm. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah.